For the Lord Jesus said, except you drink my blood and eat my flesh, that you'll have no part in me. When I take the Old Testament text and lay it in one hand and the New Testament revelation in the other, I begin to understand what's going on. For the Lord Jesus Christ's blood was the blood of God. And the Lord Jesus Christ said to them, except you drink this blood, you'll have no life in you. Then my friend, I say to myself, how do I get some of that blood to drink? Has anybody in this house ever had any of the blood of Christ that you might drink? Have you ever found the blood of Christ that you might take it into your body? You say, no, preacher, I cannot do that. And I know you can't. It does not exist on this earth. That Bible says that he entered in one time into the holy place with his own precious blood. That means that you cannot take wine or grape juice or anything else and wave your hand over it and say some words and turn it into the blood of Christ. That's not going to happen. That's transubstantiation. And that, my friend, is nothing but witchcraft and has nothing to do with the word of God. The Lord Jesus told him in John, he said, the words that I say unto you, the words that I say unto you, they are spirit and they are life. You cannot eat his flesh. Do you read in the Bible where anybody ever tried to eat the flesh of the Lord Jesus Christ? Not one time. But the spirit that is attached to that message, the message of the word of God is saying this. That almighty in heaven sent a mystery down to this earth which is the incarnate son. And the blood that flowed through the veins of the Lord Jesus Christ was the very blood of God. Therefore the life of God was living in the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, God Almighty. And what he wants you to do is to receive in the spirit what was in the life of Christ. And that is the life of God, to receive it in your soul, to say, Lord God, there's only one thing that can give me life. And that's the very life of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. There is no other life, hallelujah to God. There is no other life. It's all death. When you turn away from Christ and you turn away from the cross, you turn to death. Every religion on the face of this earth will lead you to death. There's only one life and there's only one Savior. Glory to God that can save your soul. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to God. And only his blood can give you life. The blood that was shed at the cross, the blood that stained the old rugged cross, the blood that was shed at Gethsemane, when he prayed beneath the old olive tree. I remember that song this, this morning. Hadn't heard it in a long time. But it's a beautiful old song. Neath the old olive trees. Neath the stars of the night. Walked the Savior of light. Jesus knelt on the ground. There he prayed neath the old olive trees. All the sin of the world on the Savior was hurled. As he knelt in the garden alone. Hear his soul burden plea, let this cup pass from me. Even so, but my will and thine be done. May my song ever be of the love proffered me by my Lord all alone on his knees. Praise his wonderful name, he who bore all my blame as he knelt neath the old olive trees. Neath the old olive trees, neath the old olive trees, went the Savior alone on his knees. Not my will, thine be done, cried the Father's own Son as he knelt neath the old olive trees. That's beautiful, folks. He bled there, the Bible said, as it were, great drops of blood that fell from his face. Why? It was there that the battle was joined for your soul. It was there that the Lord Jesus Christ had all the forces of hell arrayed against him. It was there that he was abandoned by his disciples and the angels came and ministered to him. I can't imagine what they said, can you? It was neath the old olive trees that the Lord Jesus Christ prepared himself to go the ultimate distance, there to be nailed on a cross. But before he ever got to that cross, Pontius Pilate took a cat of nine tails and he ripped his back open all the way to the bone and to the sinew and he bled before he went to that tree and there on the cross at Calvary my 
my friend was stained with the blood of the Son of the living God at Gethsemane and through the cat of nine tails and at the cross at Calvary my Lord Jesus Christ shed his precious blood that I might be saved I believe this morning that someone died for me and I cannot see him in my flesh but I know who he is to about 3500 years ago the children of Israel were in captivity in Egypt they'd been there for 400 years and it was time to deliver them from Egyptian bondage they took a lamb kept it up 14 days and they killed it took its blood and put it over the doorpost and lintel then they gathered together and hunkered down inside that house at midnight they could hear the cries of death as it moved through Egypt from one house to the next house they'd hear a mother cry out or a father cry out oh my god my son is dying death was everywhere it was all around them death was starting through the streets and they could feel the cold icy hand of death as it approached their dwelling place but death could only come so close for death came to the door and it saw the blood glory to God on the doorpost and the lintel and death had to pass on these people inside this house had to put their faith completely in the blood that was over that doorpost it was on the outside they were on the inside they couldn't see the blood but they put faith in the blood I'm on the inside not the outside and I've got faith today to believe that the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ will stop all the devils of hell will forgive my sin and save my soul and keep me until that day when he presents me blameless in his sight I have faith though I hear the death angel move about me though I see what sin's doing to those in this world that I live around though I realize that people are dying all about me I know that sinners are dying and they're going to hell. At this very minute they mock and make fun of God. I know what's going on. I see the death angel. I feel his cold, wicked hand. But God bless your soul. Make no mistake about it. I've got faith in the blood that's applied to that door. And he can't enter in. Amen. Hallelujah to God. If you don't have faith in the blood of Jesus Christ, in the finished work of the Son of God that is applied to that door, friend, you're not saved. you got your faith in yourself. Your faith is in your church. Your faith is in your good works. And you're not saved. The only way you can be saved is by putting faith in the finished work, in the blood atonement, at the cross at Calvary. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. I'm glad I'm saved. Whoa! I'm glad I'm saved today. This is my last time to preach. I'm ready to go. If he shouts my name this day, I'm ready to go. I know whom I have believed. And I'm persuaded he's able to keep that which I commend to him against that day. I believe in the blood. And I believe in its power. I know what it can do. I know what it did to me. I know how he saved me. I know how he washed me for my sins in his own precious blood. But I'm watching them dry, dry, drop like flies. I'm in the land of the dying. It's all around me. But he can't touch me because I'm covered by the blood. You covered by the blood? Yeah. Hallelujah to God. Then Judas, Matthew 27 said, which had betrayed him when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and brought again the 30 pieces of silver. Isn't it amazing how quickly we give up what we thought was valuable? Isn't it amazing how quickly we can turn away from this vain, empty life when we get a hold of something real, something eternal? Finally, Judas Iscariot, finally, Judas Iscariot had something burn in his soul. Finally, something said, Judas, what a fool you've been. Look who you denied. Look who you sold. The blessed son of the living God. And you know what Judas said before he hung himself? He said, I have betrayed the innocent blood. You know what he's saying? Judas is saying, I know who Abel was. And I know that Abel's blood cries from the ground. And I realize that Abel was an innocent man. That it was murdered by the hand of his brother. But glory to God, there's one greater than Abel here. A lot greater than Abel. And he's absolutely and completely innocent. 
guilty of nothing but loving your soul. And the Bible said he couldn't live with it. That's what I get from Judas. He couldn't make another day of it. He couldn't stand it. When he had got a hold of an eternal spiritual truth, something to seek his teeth into, something real, friend, that car you're driving is going to rust apart one day. That house you live in is going to fall to the ground. That body you're living in right now will one day rot away. But Judas got a hold of an eternal truth and he couldn't stand it. And he said, I betrayed the innocent and blood. Oh, the blood. And he went out and he hanged himself. And he hung himself up on a tree. And what he was saying by doing that is, I'm cursed. I'm cursed of God. Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. I'm so glad to God this morning that he came to me before I went that far. I'm so glad to God today that he came to me and convicted me and saved my soul and wrote my name in the Lamb's book of life. I'm glad to God today that I'll never be cursed because he was cursed for me. Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. It would do all of us Gentiles good this morning to study the doctrine of a curse in the Bible. It means far more than we think it means. It is a powerful, powerful thing to be cursed. But the Apostle Paul said in Romans chapter number 8, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. That word condemnation right there in Romans chapter number 8, my friend, means the same thing as curse. You can't curse what God has blessed. Has God blessed you? Have you got your faith in a blood over a doorpost that you can't see? Are you trusting one who shed his blood for you? There's a way in the presence of God, folks. That way's been made for us, but it's a blood-bought way. There's only one way that you'll ever enter into the presence of the Almighty, and that's by the blood of the Lamb of God.